Without cocoa, there is no chocolate. Without the next generation of cocoa farmers, there is no cocoa. We believe in the potential of cocoa communities around the world. We are committed to working directly with farmers. Together, we are working to transform farmers' productivity, moving forward towards results that benefit the whole community. We provide knowledge and skills to improve Cocoa families' livelihoods and opportunities. Inspiring a new generation of growers. Cocoa Life, transforming the lives of Cocoa farming families and their communities to build a better future. Thank you. Thank you. So in our next conversation, we're going to be talking about sustainability. I'm going to bring Christine Montenegro McGrath out. Christine, go ahead and come out. Hi there. Christine leads uh, sustainability, global sustainability for Mondelez International. Have a seat. Hi. So how are you? Great. How are you? I'm well. So we were just talking about planet and sustainability. And from a company's perspective, this is a new initiative, obviously, Coco Life. But how do you approach sustainability in this area, area that we've been talking about? Sure. So uh, what we've done, uh, our company, Mondelez, we're one of the world's biggest snack companies. And as part of that, one of the world's biggest chocolate companies. So we've done a lot of work to first assess. And our company was a spinoff from Kraft Foods. So we've only been in business now as an independent company for about six years. Um, I lead our sustainability efforts. We did a lot of work to analyze what is our environmental footprint so that we could focus on the areas where we could make where you had the biggest right. uh, you know, impact on the environment and what the impact was. And then we did a lot of work to study. And the work actually had, the Cadbury Corporation had started in the mid-2000s to really go into the Those cocoa. Those eggs my kids like. <laughs> exactly. To go into the cocoa origins and do more ethnographic studies. We yeah, talked yeah. about this a little bit in the past to understand you know, what was going on, not just in the environment, but it's really the whole ecosystem, as you saw in the video, and we'll talk about around not just farming productivity, but what do you really truly need to make something like cocoa sustainable? Yeah, well, so this is a $400 million initiative yes. that you've launched, really holistic, looking at not only the farmer, but the consumer. So talk briefly, if you can, about how that all works. Sure, so uh, we launched it back in 2012 with $400 million investment, and so we're about five years into the program. And the holistic nature, as I said, based on the understanding is, if you go in and you just say, okay, you know, farmers, there's a lot of complex challenges within the cocoa supply chain, and they're interrelated. So if you say, well, we want to have help teach farmers to grow more cocoa on less land, then that would help their productivity and helps their livelihoods. But then you don't have that next generation of farmers, even with right. that, who want to live in these communities because they're not really very attractive places to live. I've traveled all over the world to those the six origins that you saw there, where we source from, and you know there's not there's not good education. There are other aren't other jobs besides farming. And, and so we tackle the whole piece to say, okay, what would make these vibrant communities? If they're not vibrant communities, you don't have that next generation of farmers. And we're in chocolate for the long haul. So we want to be in business with farmers and communities that are, are vibrant and, and flourishing. That's what sustainability is for us. So is it part certification? Talk about that. Sure. So actually, we used to be uh, have certified cocoa uh, that we bought through Rainforest um, Alliance and fair trade and we we've now moved to be completely sourcing our cocoa about 35% of our cocoa today is sustainably sourced we're on a mission to get to all of it 
and um, it's all through the program now. And, um, and we've done that because we felt that with all of the work that we're doing, we, we're, we are on the ground. We, we have our own team now on the ground. And we had, as we created the program, Rainforest and Fair Trade were part of, we have a whole external advisory committee, Conservation International's on it, yeah. Wildlife Fund. We're very humble in that, you know, we do, these are really tough challenges and we do not have all the answers ourselves. However, we have a really burning desire to try to make it better. And so we invite all these partners around the table and then around in the field to help us get to better solutions. So we feel that you know, we want to um, sort of have direct responsibility and also direct, I would say, a little bit more control over, you know, we see the issues where we have, um, it's all independently verified. In fact, the, to make sure that the farmers are getting the premiums they need to be paid and that we're having the impact that we want. In fact, a flow cert, which is a division of fair trade, Yep. are the people that do the verification for us. Fair Trade is now an implementing partner. So we've gone from being just a buyer, and it really was more of a transactional distant relationship. And I, I love what Anastasia said about, you know, go for it, all in. And that's what we've really switched to is all in on the ground and then measuring that progress and sharing it very transparently what, what we're doing. Uh, it's important that we probably talk about a couple challenges. Because it's well. very difficult, sure. Yeah. yeah, so the first one, let's talk about deforestation as it relates yeah. to cocoa. Mm -hmm. So we use a lot of cocoa <laughs> in the world mm -hmm. as well. So how are you addressing that issue? Yes, so absolutely. We have five pillars that we focus on, and environment is one of them and has been since okay. 2012. So when we did um, an env that environmental footprint, and we see that uh, the biggest, for us as a company, the single biggest contribution to environmental to, defore, to environmental impact is from raw materials, cocoa number one, because we buy so much of it, and, and, um, and that deforestation was the biggest single driver. So I was like, we went all in to say, you know, what are we going to do about it? So we have a comprehensive program. We start, we're partnering with governments, partnering with NGOs, and our suppliers to um, distribute. We've distributed now about um, uh, six million cocoa seedlings. So part of the challenge is farming productivity is low for these farmers. So, um, you know, and, they, and so are their income. So they're trying to have a better livelihood. So they cut down trees and clear forests to try to, you know, um, graft something off of a cocoa tree and, and plant a new seedling. So, uh, and but the productivity continues to be low. So you have you're not really solving the problem. It just continues to be right. pervasive. So we've distributed millions of these um, cocoa seedlings as well as economic shade trees. So what does that mean? Well, the the effects of climate change is in the, in the origins where we grow West Africa, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, it's getting hotter. And, and you heard Anastasia talk about that as well. The world's getting hotter. So we, the economic shade trees, they're called that because they provide shade and cover for these little cocoa seedlings so they can grow up better. And they also um, are ways for the uh, farmers to be able to make more money. So the other thing that we've done in this whole deforestation thing is really helped to be a catalyst for change across the industry. So I'm on the board of World Cocoa Foundation. We have a whole, um, we're focused on cocoa sustainability with all of the big chocolate companies and all of our suppliers. And so we've been working now with the governments of Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana on a co cocoa and forest initiative um, that we launched um, uh, earlier in the year, late last year. And now we're all working on what are each, each of our action plans to go beyond, you know, continue to push on how we get more research resources into the hands of farmers and how we have governments also, also, you know, sort of watch the forest and protect the forest lands because that's their role. So everybody has a role to play. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, ongoing work. And, and you're on all of these things. How is this translated, though, when it, you bring it back to the rest of your company? Because we, we know that the sustainability folks like yourselves are over here working hard, and then you have to try to help convince even your own. You have to influence oh, inside. Sure. So yes. talk about yeah. that. So sometimes I, I um, have joked that my other title is, like, my, I'm the other CEO, Chief Evangelist Officer. Yeah. <laughs> so um, because I grew up in the marketing organization, and um, I had done a lot 
lot of work in innovation in the innovation space. And so um, at the time they said, you know, why don't you go work on sustainability and see if you can figure out a connection? Because we know consumers are want to know what's going right. on with our brands and want to know what's going on. So could you make that connection um, to, with the brands? So I embarked on, on this new white space of sustainability. And the first time I went to Ghana, I really was blown away. It was one of the first things that I, I did as the chief as in my role. And I was blown away because I, as a marketing person, you know, I was creating new products and advertising campaigns and everything's lovely. And, you know, you go to procurement and you say, here's my volume forecast. And magically, all the stuff appears at the plants and we make all the products and everything's and great. It just happens. And it just happens, right? And, um, and I had been visited many plants. So what I did was I took tons of pictures. I put together a whole presentation and went back to the heads of our chocolate business and said, you have no idea because they, I'm one of them, right? Like guys, I am. I get you know. You, I am lifting the curtain for you to see what is going on. On you know, and we thought because we were buying certified cocoa, we you know, again, we thought we were fine, but um, really getting down on the ground and bringing that back to the business. And I'll tell you. Now we're five years in, and there's so much pride and excitement with, within the company. Uh, every October, we have joy ambassadors that we send to um, principally Ghana, uh, and they're employees from different parts of our company, about 15 a year. They're specially chosen, sort of the younger, yeah. like more junior folks in the company, not necessarily chronologically younger, but more junior folks in the company, and they go down for two weeks, and they live and breathe and work with the, with the communities, and they help them on, you know, they help them with the harvest of the cocoa, but they also help them on their uh, business plans for other businesses they're creating, etc. They help them, you know, part of what we teach, you know, women is a big focus, but leadership skills and how to present, yep. you know, to their local governments to get more funding for and, and get some of the legislation and things that they want passed. So comprehensive program, but um, so it's pretty, it's pretty exciting, but that's just an example of, you know, it's, but it's an ongoing conversation, right, about making sure that people understand and have that transparency, transparency internally to know yeah. what's going on. All right, so I cannot have you leave here unless we talk about plastic. Because we're going to sure, get yeah, into this. Yeah, I heard and that, and I was like, I oh, that's a hot topic I think some questions are going to come our, at me like, Derek, you're too softball on this one here. Nope. So, um, how are you dealing, because there's a lot of plastic in your products, um, you know, packaging and so on. Mm -hmm. So talk about it from your lens. I'd sure. love to hear how you're approaching this. Absolutely. So packaging is one of our, our key focus areas yep. in sustainability. It has been for many years. And so uh, w one thing that we have done very successfully is to continue design, to design our packaging to use less of it. Um, and we've reduced, we have a, a goal to 2020, 65,000 tons of, of packaging overall and we're about 56 uh, million tons so far so not bad like yep. so we're doing pretty well so that's using less the other thing to understand about our packaging is that about 95 of it 95 percent of it today is recyclable and what we're focused on is that last five percent but that last five percent is tough and and we're working hard at it and what it is is if you think about the candy wrapper with the little film right um, there's some layers in there that help protect the food and keep it the, the products and keep it fresh one of the challenges is, you know, we want to make sure that we always deliver the best quality for consumers yeah. and keep it fresh. Our food waste impact, because of the raw material piece, is 10 times the uh, environmental um, harm than uh, our packaging is, believe it or not. So we're, we're balancing many pieces. But we are on a, a mission now to continue to make all of those, the pieces of the film and those parts that we're using, um, to push to get them to all be recyclable. The other piece, though, that's important that we're also working on is that, um, and, and I always find it amazing how low the statistics are about recyclable, you know, even when you have 95% of your packaging can be recycled. Is the it's population so doing it's so low, yeah. right. So um, we're getting started on figuring out, you know, how do we educate consumers? And, and we're already working with like consumer goods forums, so our peer companies on, and the Ellen MacArthur Foundation on how can we go to governments and, and you know, build infrastructure in developing parts of the world. Good. Well, thank you. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Go ahead and yeah. Well, I, I'm going to.